Hey everyone, it's me, ya boy Crocodile Death Speed. Today's my birthday. I'm turning 31 today, 24th of December 2017. And uh, I wanted to share with you some, uh, some life advice, some uh, shit that I've learned uh, at the school of life, you know, uh, shit that I wish that I knew earlier, I guess. Basically, that's it. See you after the credits for 31 bits of exploding knowledge. The first thing doubles, I guess, as a uh, disclaimer, is that no advice will fit for everyone. Everyone's different. There is no one technique that will allow you to pleasure every woman and ace every of your projects and uh, all that. If you're the kind of person to have, like, one big rule like, in life, it's probably going to do you a disservice. It's probably not going to work out in the end. But, and this is point number two, general rules exist and they will work most of the time for most people. So having one big rule is not really a bad thing as long as you can be flexible about it as long as you can adapt it to the context and the situation. Like, um, when, I, when I was younger, I read um, a book on uh, Zen Buddhist philosophy, and there was this one thing in the book that had a, a, a really great impression on me, that's, and, and it was like just a line that says, if in life you are facing two different paths, always pick the most difficult one. I thought I was really deep and I don't know it resonated with me and and uh, so I tried doing that and I can say that it worked most of the time but there was times when I when I wish I didn't stick to my guns as hard as I did when I was the you know 20 something and uh, when you have a 20 something you, you you hold your beliefs really dear because you think that uh, that's what defines you. But is it really? I mean, opinions are, are, in a way, fleeting. You change your mind all the time about all different kinds of stuff, and probably your political opinions when you're 18 will be completely different from your political opinions when you're, like, 30, or at least 50% different. I will, you, you will have shed a lot of things and acquired a lot of different things it's not just politics your your tastes too uh, in music for example or in movies some will stay some will be completely different and uh, yeah i think that's uh, the kind of thing that uh, you should also uh, remember and that is my piece of advice number three some things change don't hold too much to some stuff just because you used to like it. You're not defined by your opinions. They change all the time. They will change a lot throughout your life. You're not defined by your tastes in music or in movie or in women or men or whatever. You're you're not defined by your fashion. You're not you're defined by your interactions with the world, with other people. That's really what defines you. How you interact with people, how you interact with the world. That's the one thing that is really you. And that brings us into point number four, is that it's okay to let go uh, of things and of people that don't fit into your life anymore. People kind of change all the time, not really deep inside. I think what people um, are like deep inside never really changes, but sometimes they are like something and they realize it more and more and they allow themselves more to be themselves and, and that 
a person is not the person that you thought that you fell in friendship with. And yeah, sometimes you, you, you can feel the relationship that you have with your friend uh, becoming becoming toxic in a way, becoming, you know, not good for you and uh, it starts making you feel bad and it starts uh, projecting a, a bad image of yourself and it's okay to let go of uh, these friendships, it's okay to just um, stop talking to these people, not see them anymore, just let go, let it go away, find new friends, find new people, and uh, or just uh, have a, a more close-knitted circle of friends, have less, fewer, fewer friends, but more intimate relationship, more close, it's always okay to let go of a friendship if you don't feel good in it anymore. It's always okay to let go of a relationship of any kind because there are billions of people in the world and there will always be something for you. And um, that brings us into our point number five is that when you let go of a friendship, be courteous or yeah, you know, don't, don't burn bridges. You were in a relationship of any kind with uh, any people and you decide it's time to stop. Don't burn bridges because, as I said earlier, things change, people change, situations change. And maybe later, maybe years later, maybe months, maybe decades, it can be time again to work for that company, to be friends with these people again, to... Uh, maybe not go or, uh, back into a relationship with an ex, but, you know, it's just, it's not just these people. These people have friends and they have relationships. And you, if you be, behave like an asshole when you get away from them, it can have, you know, ripples and repercussions. And uh, sometimes um, you don't expect where it's going to come from. When you break up with someone or, you know, quit being friends with someone like an asshole and you burn that bridge, you're not only burning a bridge with one person, there is always a network of other friends, of other, I don't know, colleagues, co-workers, potential employers, potential love interests that you can impact by being an asshole. So uh, always do it softly, never burn bridges. That is not a smart thing to do. Now, number six for something completely different, um, always remember that talent is a kind of a meaningless term and it just means work. If you really decide to put 10,000 hours of work into something, whether it is learning piano or being good at Counter-Strike Global Offensive or whatever, uh, if you are willing to put enough work into any subject, craft, knowledge of your choice, you can become a really good and, and kind of an expert at it. And uh, there is no such thing as an innate disposition or a natural talent uh, for anything. If you want to become good at drawing, draw every day, practice, 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 and you will become good. And this idea of, you know, talent or even inspiration, which is kind of the same thing, uh, that people are born with it, that it just occurs to them, that they have a natural uh, inclination, natural talent for something. Not only is will it, will it make you a loser, because it will hinder you for, from pursuing your dreams if you want to become a great painter you, you, and you try painting and you're shit at it and you're just like, ah, not for me and you can pass on a huge opportunity to just be happy and satisfied with your life doing something that you actually love and uh, and this is actually a double-edged sword where both ends of the sword are covered in shit because not only will this make you a loser this belief it will also make you an obnoxious piece of shit to the people who have actual talent, which means tens of thousands of hours of work and something. Because when you tell them, oh wow, you really have a natural talent for this, you're really born for this, uh, maybe in your mind 
This sounds good and nice, but it's really a slap in the face of the creator who put hours after hours after hours of work and practice and trying to become good at their craft and you're just brushing it off by oh such a natural talent oh such a great predisposition that you have no 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 and no talent is just work that's it now i think we're at point number seven uh point number seven there is no such thing as being ready for something. Often when you want to try a new thing, whatever it is, you know, whether it is something of a sexual nature or something business related or just uh, going in uh, some country that you always dreamt visiting, whatever, if you want to try something new and you are waiting to feel ready for it, you are just wasting your time. There is no such thing as being ready. What ends up happening all the time is just after a while, you are just, just tired of waiting, and you are just, no, I don't feel, I still don't feel ready, but I'm going to do it anyway. And that's always what happens. You are waiting for that moment, when you're going to feel ready and it never comes because that does not exist you're never really ready for anything so if you want to do it if you want to do something might as well do it now of course if this is running a marathon you should probably train for it obviously if you want to visit a foreign country you should probably learn the language first uh, sometimes there are some prerequisites that you should, yeah, delve into. But, you know, these obvious things aside, if you want to do something, do it now. There's no better time than now, really. And, um, yeah, that kind of brings us into point number eight. Uh, if you want to do things, the most important things are starting and finishing. Uh, don't worry too much about the methods. Don't worry too much about how much time... It will take. Don't worry too much about stuff in in general. Worrying is uh, the worst thing you can do in any situation. It's counterproductive. One hundred percent of the time, you should try and learn how to stop worrying about stuff. You 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 can. There are things that uh, are natural, but you can unlearn with practice. Like your gag reflex, you can learn how to not have one anymore with enough practice. Uh, just as with enough practice, you can learn not to worry anymore about things. And I, lots, lots of things that I started, especially in my, in my 20s, and that I never finished because, oh, the lyrics of that song were in this notebook and I've lost the notebook, so uh, song is gone now. Or, uh, you know, this, this script for that video, can I, I can find it, or... Uh, I, I don't like it anymore, but uh, maybe if I did that three years ago, uh, it would have been satisfying, satisfactory to me, and it would have helped me learn making videos and, you know, do things, start things and finish them. That's the most important part. The rest doesn't matter that much. Number eight, never be embarrassed about who you are, about what you do. Uh, being embarrassed is uh, bullshit, and uh, always when you're embarrassed is because you think that other people pay much more attention to you than they actually do. We all make mistakes, we all stumble and fall while going down stairs, we all uh, say something stupid at a stupid time, it happens all the time. Um, what happened, what is important in life is not when you fall, is how you get up. And uh, tr you will get up anyway, so try to do it as fast as you can without too much decorum and without thinking about it too much. And that uh, thing brings us into point number, um, I think it's 10. Thinking not enough about things is bad, but overthinking is worse. Overthinking is kind of like a plague right now and uh, people worry way too much and think way too much about things and doing things is more important than thinking, thinking about them 
and the practice always trumps theory. It's always better to do something um, than to just think too much and uh, that you, your, your thoughts will hinder uh, your, your actions and you, you don't live really inside your head, you live inside the world. And uh, some would argue that because of how the brain and the senses work, the world actually lives inside your head, and it's kind of a paradox, but uh, better not think too much about that. And that brings us into point number 10, one of uh, the, the biggest, probably, lessons uh, of this class, is that um, regret is always worse than remorse. Uh, what I mean by this is that regret is when you could have done something, you wanted to do something, but you hesitated too much and you thought maybe this will go bad and, and, and you don't do it. And then after that you have regret. You think, oh, I really should have done this. And remorse is when you are a bit too careless and you do things that... Oh, I should not have done that. And regrets all are much, much more painful than remorse. So always try to live your life so you have no regrets. Do more things and be less afraid to do things. And always try more new things. And that will make you happy in the long run. Because you won't have all these times when you're just thinking about things. Like, oh, I really should have done this. Oh, I really should have kissed that girl. Oh, I really should have went uh, with my friends in, in, when they went on that trip to Argentina or, or whatever. Oh, I should have gone to that party that night. And uh, oh, I should have um, I should have bought uh, Dark Souls Three when it was on sale. Uh, whatever, whatever it is, whatever you want to do in life, whatever your uh, your aspirations and your likings and it's especially true in relationships because sometimes you have a window of time uh, when you can you know meet someone or you know uh, tell about your feelings uh, to to some some girl or guy or s someone you want to be friends with you just uh, you think you think it's gonna be embarrassing um, to um, not go and tell him ah, I think you're cool maybe you should maybe we should uh, I don't know, uh, hang out sometimes, play video games, drink some coffee or whatever, you know, watch the game. Uh, and you know what's more embarrassing? That um, admitting that you wanted to be friends with someone, uh, not, having, not having friends. And uh, you know what's more embarrassing? That uh, not uh, asking a girl out while uh, being alone. Because you embarrass yourself and you hurt yourself, and uh, it's probably the worst thing that you can do is wrongdoing yourself. Because you live with that uh, all the time, and and you start hating yourself, and these bad feelings they start impacting you. And if you can transform them into uh, energy and and motivation to actually do things, to actually ask that girl out to actually start this company that uh, you've been trying to do for start this new business start this new business of uh, repairing iPhone screens you know what you know what I regret not buying Bitcoin when I started er uh, hearing about it uh, I I was really into technology and internet stuff uh, way back in um, 2011. And uh, I really wanted to buy a, a bunch of bitcoins, you know, not a lot because, but just I know I don't know maybe a hundred because at the time they were like not not even one cent or uh, maybe there were a few cents or something like that, and uh, I, I I see how crazily the the price has risen recently. Uh, in 2011, I was interested in bitcoin. I knew all about it. I I knew how to get. So I could have I could have bought. A, a, a couple I could have bought maybe a hundred of them and uh, I could have tried mining a bit because at the time it was like really not a big deal and I didn't do it because uh, I don't know I thought uh, nothing would come of it uh, I thought they would probably never work oh, this is a new thing uh, I, I thought that in by 2012 everyone would have forgotten about it 
And um, yeah, yeah, sometimes uh, I've had first dates when I was younger, when I did not give my 100% and I, and I regretted that. And uh, when, when, better, when better time to give you 100% in bed than a first date, that's the one moment in your life when you should really go all out. And uh, yeah, things like that, you know, we all have our regrets and we all should try to have the least as possible because that is the worst thing you can have in life. For uh, number 11, we're gonna go in a completely different direction and this, I apologize to my uh, uh, female watchers, but this is for uh, the, the dudes uh, only. Um, nose hair, that can be a problem, and that can be a problem sooner than you think. I started having nose hair issues when I was about 25. That's not exactly the age that you think you're gonna have too much nose hair and you worry about it and do something about it. But yeah, that's the age where it happened to me. And uh, it's uh, worse than you think because you, you, you feel it. It starts sticking out and it's ugly and it tickles the inside or the outside of your nose. These things, I actually have two nose hair trimmers. I don't have one, I have two. Uh, this one has the blades on the side, and this one has the blades on the front. So I use I I, I gotta use both to to get rid properly of all the nose hair uh, that I have, and it's normal. It's your body. It's that's something that happens. And getting rid of your nose hair, it's just like uh, wiping your ass after taking a shit. It's you don't have to. Uh, no, nobody, nobody's ashamed of taking a shit. Everyone does it, so uh, you, you shouldn't think twice about it. If you start having nose hair problems, uh, especially if it hinders your breathing, that, that, that happens with me as well. If I don't trim my nose hair for a while, I start having uh, issues just breathing with my nose. That That's uh, how much I, I have of it. Uh, buy this shit, it's cheap as fuck. This is, uh, I, pay, I, I think I paid... Uh, um, 10 euros for this one and 15 for this one. It's cheap as hell. And uh, one is enough. Uh, I, I have two because I, uh, I, I, one is one is probably enough for most people. Seriously, this will probably change your life. Um, or at least make it a, a little bit better, which is basically the same thing. Now let's go back to advice that will apply to likely everyone with point 12. If at some point, in your life, you got a feeling that everyone around you is an asshole. You are likely to be the problem. It's probably you, the asshole. That's called uh, projecting, I think. And it happens more often than you would think. And uh, be mindful of that. Sometimes it's not a big deal. Sometimes it can become a real problem. Uh, I, I, too often, I hear um, gals saying, Oh... Uh, old men are uh, assholes. All the, the guys I've had in my life were pieces of shit. And uh, I've heard dudes, I've heard men say that as well f uh, about about women. And um, yeah, if that happens to you, you're probably the, the problem. You're probably the asshole. You're, you're the one who has the wrong expectations or keeps choosing the wrong people. Or I mean, you, you chose them. They didn't fall from the sky into your house. So uh, yeah. Uh, number 13. Number 13 is uh, something that may, may be a bit personal, because uh, I know it's not the same for everyone, but um, on the subject of dating, a lot of people are trying to become friends first with the person, or, you know, go into relationships with people that have known for months or years, people they are already friends with. And I have found that, at least for myself, uh, this does not work at all. And starting relationships with people who are basically strangers works much better. This is probably not an advice for everyone, but if you are stuck with dating, this may be your problem. If you see that you keep going into relationships that don't work, 
this can be a problem and this is all oh, this can be a double problem because you're, you're if the relationships go sour you're probably gonna lose your friend um, that you went in a relationship with so you know this double whammy of shit and um, and you really don't want that you really don't want to, to lose uh, your lover and your best friend uh, at the same time this this would be my advice when it goes to dating uh, find someone I don't know on a dating site or uh, some or a friend of a friend of a friend that you've just met at a party. What I do is I tell the person uh, I think uh, you're pretty. I, I think you seem pretty cool and and uh, you, you're in my opinion really attractive. So uh, I would really like to have sex with you and maybe if I find you really really cool and you find me really really cool, we can start a relationship together. Who knows? And uh, something like that, you know, something no strings attached, it always works much, much better than um, starting with the heavy stuff first. All my relationships that started with just fucking basically a stranger um, and then evolved into a long-term relationship went on really well and were, uh, I would say, really successful. And um, all my relationships that started with uh, people that I were friends with first, that I, that I knew for a long time and uh, that I knew really well, uh, they didn't work at all. I guess I'm just look for really different things in a friend and in a lover. That's probably the thing. But anyway, if you are stuck with uh, dating and keep going into relationships that don't get, that keep failing, that may be your problem. Number 14. Um, never start with the heavy stuff first when you got things to do. Some people do that. And they find that it's the really uh, great way to achieve things. They, they call this uh, bite the turtle or some stupid uh, expression like that. Uh, for me, it works really, really bad. And uh, I start always with the easy stuff. That kind of that kind of gets me into motion. You know, it's kind of like warming up bef before doing sports or, or 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 music. I'm someone that has to warm up a lot, whether it is for doing sports or being productive. And what better warm up than actually a useful one? Uh, like, I don't know if you have uh, several things to do during your day. Something easy, like a lot of laundry. Something in between, like doing the dishes. And something hard, like filing your taxes. Uh, do them in that order. Easy, medium, hard. Uh, doing the easy first is always what works for me. And it helps me do more. Point number 15 is being thrifty is good being thrifty is great take care of your finances but being thrifty only is good for things that don't really matter to you if you are not into fashion buy this one dollar shirts at i walmart if you are not a foodie start a staple diet of rice and and pasta but if you are into drawing, buy that um, expensive pen that will help you um, be, probably not be better, but be more comfortable at your craft. Be thrifty to allow you to spend money in the things that really matter to you. And I, get the, and I guess the bottom line is don't spend money on things that don't matter to you. I think that's probably um, a better way to say it. Uh, don't waste your money on things you don't really give a shit about. Number 17. I think I'm lost. I don't care. I should have done a better script for this video. But anyway, I did it. And that's the most important. Uh, number 17. It's never shameful to ask for help when you think you need it. And uh, I would actually go as far as to say that it is is actually shameful not asking for help when you need it. Uh, some time ago I said that I hate co-op mode in video games. I said that and I meant it. I hate co-op mode in video games. 
But in real life, co-op mode is the best. And sometimes you think it's gonna annoy people, but it rarely does. Actually, often it's the, op it's the other way around. Uh, last week, last week even, uh, I had a leak in my bathroom. My, my, my toilet started leaking, and uh, I asked my girlfriend to help me repair it and at first she was not really keen on it but it turned out to be uh, fun and also it took five minutes instead of uh, half an hour so um, life is short and if you can take shortcuts for anything do it this wall this very blue wall that you have been seeing in the background for years uh, I painted it with a friend painting walls is a fucking hassle and especially since uh, I had to uh, put on a lot of layers and that means painting the wall, waiting for hours or sometimes even days uh, because it was in the winter so it wasn't really hot so paint dries slow and uh, yeah, 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 that, that, that went on for days I painted the whole house including the ceilings and uh, that was really a hassle so, uh, so uh, I called uh, one of my friends to help me paint the walls and we painted the walls together and it was kind of fun and it's a really it's a really good memory for the both of us and some of my best uh, memories with some friends or some family members was uh, getting shit done together and taking care of uh, 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 fixing uh, broken shit uh, together and and yeah it's uh, you think it's gonna annoy people but actually it's uh, it's kind of a sign for them that you value them, that you trust them to uh, to do this important thing that you need. It does not make people feel used, uh, except if you do it too often, of course. If you only think that you need help for, for anything, any project, any issues, anything to fix, ask for help right away, don't waste time trying to fix shit yourself. Uh, maybe you think that it's gonna make you feel good to uh, fix things by yourself, to solve problems all by yourself, but it won't. It will make you feel like a sucker and a chump and an idiot who wasted his time, hours fixing something, when while if you did it with a friend or a relative it could have taken minutes instead of hours and yeah it's just gonna make you feel like an asshole there's no point in trying to fix things by yourself if you can do it with other people number 18 stay hydrated this may sound like a joke or a shit bust compared to the other points but actually a really valid thing to uh keep thinking about Sometimes you don't realize it, but you need a tall glass of water to make your troubles go away. Sometimes you feel tired and you don't know why. Sometimes you, you, you don't feel good and you don't know why. Sometimes you think you're hungry, but you don't really know why you want to eat and it's weird. Maybe just drink a fucking glass of water and everything will be better. Um, it sounds stupid, but it's worked for me on a numerous amount of times. And any fluid that is water-based will work. Some people will tell you, oh, a coffee does not hydrate properly. That's bullshit. Science has proven it a shitload of times. Coffee hydrates just as well as water. Coffee, tea... Juice, avoid juice, because it, it's uh, fruit juice contains a shitload of fructose, which is really toxic for your liver and one of the main uh, causes of diabetes. But uh, if it's just one glass, of course, you should be fine. Um, what else? Beer works too, um, especially if you are in one country where uh, you have light beer. It doesn't exist here, but uh, there's basically no alcohol in it and you can drink it pretty much like or milk works as well uh you know to tomato juice uh i guess number 19 this is gonna sound like fake deep but actually it's really fucking true uh, appreciate the little things in life because the more you do the, the more you grow older the more you realize that they are actually the big things 
and um, when you are young, you think that uh, what is important is maybe love, maybe your future career, your your studies, your uh, making your parents proud, all these big things that seem so important in life. But sometimes just waking up early and going at the bakery around the corner and, and buying a cookie and just eating that while watching the sunrise, this will be some of your best memories. This will be some of the things that you realize are the most important. Number 20, your health. You only have one. You only have one health. You only have one life. If some things go, if something is going wrong, take care of it ASAP. Don't wait. Because there is this tiny little thing with uh, health issues is that they tend not to go away on their own and when they are unchecked and unattended that they tend also to get worse and worse and worse over time and it's just like doing the dishes you know uh you you tell yourself oh there's a lot of dishes but i'll do them tomorrow and there's more and more and more dishes and after after a while your sink is just overflowing with all these dishes and you have nothing clean and of course it doesn't really matter it's just dishes you can just take a mole throw them in the garbage and buy some clean ones i've i've done this more than once and it's not even ashamed of it because sometimes in life you gotta take shortcuts time is your most valuable resource but yeah um but yeah your health issues if you have a broken tooth for example get it fixed asap uh if you have i don't know a cough that won't go away and you think nothing of it but maybe after a while you discover that it's that you you should have taken care of it much earlier you know don't wait to take care of health issues i mean of course i guess you can wait two or three days but don't wait weeks or months you know Anyway, uh, number 21, uh, um, also in the health department, but not only, uh, tanning. Tanning is stupid. It's dumb. Um, I, I, I thought that tanning was dumb for a, for, for a long time, and I, I think that tanning is dumb more and more as I age. Who gives a shit if you're tan or not? I think it makes you look hot. It, it actually does not make you look that different. It's a, it's a stupid thing to waste your time on. And also, it can give you uh, skin cancer, which is probably one of the most easy-to-catch cancers and one of the most hard to get rid of. It doesn't have to be an integral part of your summer experience. If you like sunbathing, I guess, go on the sun for a, for a few minutes. That's, that us that's usually enough. I, I love the sun and I love sunbathing, but after 30 minutes, I mean, you've done the thing. Why why do it more? Uh, actually, um, I, I think it was in the 19th century, um, tanning made you made you look dumb and, and poor. And uh, the, the, the rich people, the classy people, they were as pale as possible. So uh, that fashion... That's that, that's just a stupid fashion. <sighs> Number twenty-two. Never be ashamed of what you like. If it makes you happy, and it doesn't hurt anyone else, then do it as much as you feel like it. There is literally no downside in this, and there is literally all downside in not doing this. There is no valid reason or excuse not to follow this advice number 23 learn a new language if you want and maybe several uh, it's one of the most fun activities that i know of and it's uh, it's really rewarding too a few years ago i i took about six months of german courses online and uh, yeah after after six months I could uh, understand all the uh, Rammstein lyrics uh, without needing a dictionary or just I could just read them and I understood what they meant 
and it's yeah it's really fun it's really rewarding and uh, that's an underrated activity and also I heard that it was really good really good for uh, the brain and it's uh, one of the best ways to avoid getting Alzheimer's when you're uh, getting older uh, learning uh, because because it, it happens mostly to people who don't use their minds enough and um, yeah learning a new language is, is a great way to, uh, to avoid getting Alzheimer's or so I've heard number 24 if you don't know your calling in life maybe it's just that you don't have one some people have some people will know what they want to do some people know they have dreams they have a dream job they have a, a envisioned a career and they want to do that and they're really passionate about it and they are a minority uh, if by the age of 18 you don't know what you want to do in life take a sabbatical year after you have your high school diploma to reflect on who you are and what you like and what you want to do but chances are that if after high school you don't know what you want to do you will never really know what you want to do or it will come kind of late you know i didn't know what i wanted to do in life when i was 16 when i got my high school diploma and uh now at 31 years old i still don't really know and uh yeah some people will tell you follow your dreams well i never had a dream and it it never happened to me don't wait for your dream to happen because sometimes it just won't uh dr try to find something that you don't hate try to find something that motivates you i guess try to find something uh that you don't think it's it's lame try to just find anything and uh in in uh, our in in our times right now it's really easy to change your career maybe even like every couple of years i've done a lot of different jobs in my life i've worked in uh, education i have been a a journalist i have worked in kitchens for many years i have worked retail i have been a factory worker and um yeah i have been a warehouse man recently and now i'm a internet entertainer guy entertainer um, fits the bill quite well i think but anyway uh none of none of these things are a, a calling it's just uh things that i like um i like doing simple things and using my hand Hence why I work in a factory and, and in kitchens and also I'm I'm kind of passionate about food and cooking so it helps with the with the cooking work and um yeah I I like writing and I and I like music so I, I became a journalist in a in a metal uh magazine. Um if you're motivated and you're willing to show for it, you you, you can have a lot of jobs that you think you probably can't um, some jobs really require a, a diploma, but a lot don't. And you can just try to find, you know, connections. Because connections are always the most important thing. That will be, I guess, my point number 25. Uh, connections are the most important thing in the work environment, in, in careers, in, in jobs. Um, how you interact with people that's the number one thing that you you need to take care of connections are the one thing that is sure to to land you a decent job and uh fifty percent of doing your job is being nice to your boss and your co-workers and not being an asshole uh, number 27 number I, I hope we're at 27 I think we're at 27 pretty sure anyway um, what I what I wanted to say for 27 is that um, merit is pretty much bullshit and if you believe in a meritocracy you're pretty much just a dumb sucker
I think it's an important thing to realize and the earlier you realize it, the better uh, you will fare in life. Uh, you, you, merit is um, it's, it's a bullshit thing and meritocracies do, do not exist the, or, or maybe in fiction, you know, it's a kind of utopia, I guess. But in real life, that's not how it works and that's not how it's gonna work and that's probably not how it should work. And, um, yeah, getting things based on merit will probably not happen to you. Um, it will happen to you in video games, I guess. Uh, in video games, you, you can get things based on merit, but in real life, not so much. So kind of forget about this. And also, uh, the whole concept of deserving things. Um, in positive, just like in negative... It's wrong as shit, and that's not how the world works. Uh, being upset because you think you deserve this promotion at work, and you don't have it, that's not gonna give you a promotion. That's just gonna make you sound like an asshole. Um, not asking a girl out because you think you don't deserve her, uh, that's just make you a stupid loser. And not going after things because you think you don't deserve them, that's really dumb. And being upset that you're not getting stuff because you think you deserve them, that's also really dumb. So uh, that's two things that you should really forget about. Uh, merit and deserving. Those are really dumb concepts that only work in fiction and not in the real world. Try to get what you can get. Try to, to grab shit. If you think that a girl is out of your league, that is a meaningless concept. If you are attracted to a, a girl or a, or a dude, go ask him out. That's all you gotta do. Don't think too much about it. Number 28. Number 28, uh, your pets. They may be just a, a part of your life, but you are their whole life. Their whole life, they're going to spend it with you. Most In most cases. And you should take the best care of them that you can. And especially um, if there's a medical emergency. Try to do your best to take care of that because if you don't you're gonna regret it for your you're gonna beat yourself up your whole life about it in 95 percent uh, of cases uh, your pets are gonna die before you during your lifetime so uh, there's th three cases basically um, either they die in good health of old age and that is awesome either they die of an incurable disease that you could do nothing about it you took him to the vet and they did all they could and they could not save him and that's sad but still you did all what you could and it won't give you nightmares but if you could have done something and you didn't because you didn't have the time or the money. If you don't have the time or the money, find someone who has. Ask your family, your friends, anyone. Bring them to the vet and tell them that you cannot pay them right now. No veterinarian asks for paying up front. Take them to the vet and if you can't pay, tell, tell them after. And even, even if they get upset, they're still take, taking care of your pet. And that is what matters. Number uh, 29. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure it's 29. I'm, I'm not sure if I've done it right. But actually, uh, it doesn't matter. Because people watching this will hopefully learn stuff and... 
people were going to be angry that I missed one number or that I did 17 twice, I don't know, uh, are assholes. And, and, and it's not um, important to think about them because it says more about... Because the fact that we'll, they will be upset if it's not exactly perfect says more about their shitty character than it says about my shitty work. And that is kind of point number nine. Actually, that's kind of what it is. Don't be a perfectionist. Uh, it's pointless. It's only going to make you waste time and resources and, uh, and all that shit. Um, try to do things right, of course. But work smart, not hard. I mean, always try to work smart and not hard. If you can cut corners do it if you can take shortcuts do it if a work is good release it and uh, if it needs to be perfect like if you're an architect and you're designing a bridge of course it needs to be perfect but if you're a, a musician that is making a song uh, nobody will hear that the, the, the drum sound is a, a bit different at the 34th um, block. Work does not need to be perfect, it needs to be done, most importantly. And of course, um, what I think is that if you cannot find a way to work smart, then you're gonna have to work hard. But if you can find a way to work smart rather than hard, it's always better. Um, it's pointless to put time in things, period, really. Um, only do it if you need to. Doing more work will not increase the value of what you are making. It's not an intrinsic thing. You don't put work into a box and, and quality appears. Uh, that's not that's not how it works, and I don't know. I I, I think uh, Billie Jean by Michael Jackson was made in four hours, and uh, some people spent some people spend months on on, on a songs that end up being shitty. Um, the the amount of work that you put in in something does does not really matter. Number um, 30, we are at 30 already, yeah. Uh, number 30 is that another really important point is that you are not special and you are not unique. And there's a lot of people out there that are going to try to make you believe that you are special and unique and really one of a kind, usually to sell you stuff make you make you buy useless shit but uh that that couldn't be further from the truth and it's fine because it's worthless to be special and it's worthless to be unique because it means that you cannot relate with other people and relating with other people is kind of like the basis of society uh, you know that word that we use to define who we are the word identity well, it comes from the same root as identical. Identity is what we have in common with other people, not what makes us different. A lot of people at the moment are trying to um, make us believe that what's important is celebrate our differences. But you will find in life that what's most important is to celebrate our similarities much more than our differences. Why do you think that there's relatable things have so much success? It's great when you find something that is relatable, right? Originality is a stupid concept that does not really exist in real life. Uh, all that we do is something else other things that are copied and, and transformed and combined into new things. Nothing comes out of thin air. Uh, the guy who invented metal uh, 
it based it on rock music and rock music was based on blues and jazz which themselves were based on classical music from Europe and African music and so on and so forth and maybe cavemen really invented shit but they did not really uh, sounds are already in, in, in the nature and communication is a thing that a lot of birds and, and mammals and fish do with each other no, nothing is really original and it's pointless trying to be unique and it's much better trying to find the similarities we have with other people um, to, to make society better the internet is really important for that. That's one of the beauties of the internet. It's finding people who are like you. Finding people who share your interests. Uh, finding people who have things in common with you that you thought that would not be possible. That sometimes we do weird shit. Sometimes we like weird stuff. And sometimes we like to think that something that only us do. But go on Reddit and you will find probably thousands of people who like the exact same thing, who do the exact same stuff. Whether you were a furry or a fan of Mertzbo or anything, you will find someone who has the same tastes, who has the same opinions, who has the same liking, and that is good. Strive to be relatable rather than being special. And if you love something that is really mainstream, it's cool because you can share it with a lot of people. If you're a fan of Game of Thrones, it's great for you because you will be able to share that love with a lot of people and talk about it, share your theories, who's your favorite character, what you think will happen, what you think should happen. That's amazing. But if you like something that is rare, and a bit um, less mainstream. Uh, don't hold on it even more. Never let it go because it's important for people who like the same thing to not be alone. Show your true colors. If you like BDSM, for example, nosedive into it because that's important for yourself, for your happiness, for your flourishment and uh, for the other people that you are going to meet that like it. Be upfront about it when you're trying to date and it will only attract people that are even more compatible with you. You should never hide who you are and you should never hide what you like or what's going to end or what is going to happen. It's that the friends that you will make won't know the real you and you won't be able to be really yourself with your friends and you will end up in relationships with people that you are not really compatible with. That's why it's really important to be yourself. Always there this uh, dating advice, relationship advice that be yourself. It's important why not to attract people. You're not going to attract people by being yourself. Of course, if you just want to bang, if you just want to chick for the night, don't be yourself. Pretend to to pretend to be cooler than you are. It's fine. But if you want a relationship to last, if you want a true, fulfilling, meaningful relationship, that's why you have to be yourself from the start. Or you will be disappointed in yourself. You won't have a fulfilling relationship, whether it is um, a love relationship or, or a friendship. And uh, you will disappoint the other people who thought they knew you. And turns out, they don't. And number 31, I guess, is uh, don't think too much about what other people think of you. But... Don't ignore it altogether. Uh, it's a bit difficult. That's why I put it at the end where most people probably stop watching. Because that's a difficult concept. There, There is this proverb, uh, which is not a proverb. It's a little story for from the Middle East. Uh, where there is a, a man and his wife and their donkey. The woman is uh, uh, sitting on the donkey while the man is, is, is walking at their side. 
and there are a lot of people on the side of of the road who who is mocking them who say oh uh, where we can see who's wearing the pants in this relationship and uh, this guy is really being controlled by his wife how pathetic and uh, and things like that so uh the the man uh, it, it kind of gets to him and 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 the woman too and they both become ashamed of these comments so they swap their places and the guy is on the donkey now and the woman is walking and there's a lot of people on the side of the road to say oh look at how this guy treat, treats his uh, wife that is shameful the poor woman she has to walk while he's comfortable on the donkey uh, what a macho asshole that's really that's really backwards and so uh, the comments both get to uh, the the couple and so they start walking both of them side by side with the donkey and a lot of people on the side of the road start mocking them again and say oh what idiots they they, they have a donkey and they don't even use it that's retarded i mean yeah, can you see these goobers can you see these suckers they they they're not even on the donkey the, the donkey is just walking alongside them well <laughs> they're really stupid so um, after a while, they, they decide to go both on the back of the donkey and people on the side of the road keep pointing at them and say, Oh, look at these animal abusers. They're going to kill that poor donkey. They're probably hurting his back. Uh, what assholes they are. They're, they're really pieces of shit. And they're really not taking care of their animal properly. And... That's it. There's no... The bottom line of this story is that whatever you do, there are people who will make fun of you and who will tell you that you are doing things wrong. But that's uh, a thing in life that is kind of obvious, actually, and that you, you, you will uh, learn that at quite a young age. That's not the 31th... That's not the 31th... 1th, Point. That's not what's important. It's that sometimes people will tell you you're doing things wrong and they will be right. Try to learn the difference between haters and constructive criticism. And that is something that is really hard. And I, I don't really have, that's going to be disappointing for some of you, but I don't really have a cheat sheet. I don't really have a, a special technique to to uh to remind it it's just this is one of the most important things that you're going to learn in life is to uh to see if uh, people are right of criticizing you or if they're just being you know haters and uh not everyone who criticizes you is a hater some people uh, have valid points and and some people are saying that because they want to help you. Uh, and even if they don't want to help, they're just speaking their mind. Not everyone who criticizes you is a hater. It's kind of a 80-20. And yeah, try to try try to figure out. Try to figure out if what people say about you is right or wrong. But don't take it into account too much. What really matters is what you think. It's your life. You live it on your terms and if you're not really if no, if you're not doing anything that is harmful to others you got you you're doing nothing wrong all input is good input or most of it is but you you don't have to let it control your life that's uh that's the bottom line of of, of what I want to say with this point i guess it's maybe a complex one but um, yeah, that's, that is the, the thing. Anyway, uh, I hope you have learned stuff today, and, uh, that video was not for nothing, and if I even helped one of y'all, then, uh, mission accomplished, and I guess, uh, that I fulfilled uh, my purpose in life and uh, I made myself a valuable asset to society and uh, 
that's all I strive for, I guess. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you were watching this far, consider uh, subscribing to my Patreon. Link in the video description. And um, yeah, that, that, that's all really. Uh, you're cool. And uh, see ya really soon. Peace.